Hello, welcome to medical record auditing. This is week one and in this week we'll cover chapters one and two. Chapter one deals with the role of medical record auditing and the importance of it and what medical record auditors actually do. And chapter two gets into the importance of the compliance plans that all medical offices should have. Let's have a look at chapter one and look at what a medical record auditor actually does. And again, this chapter deals with exactly what a medical record auditor does. Medical record auditing is becoming increasingly important, important, excuse me, due to electronic health records, automated pick lists, products like 3M that has voice activated transcription that then suggests codes and so on. So we'll talk a little bit about the benefits of auditing medical records, the role of the medical record auditor, qualifications and skills that are needed, and talk about the importance of certification. Increasingly, the healthcare environment is getting more and more regulated. And this really accelerated under the passage of HIPAA. HIPAA, we always think of as privacy data security, but there's also a link to standard data sets, meaning coding. And unfortunately, this has put not only hospitals, but medical practices under the magnifying glass. A medical practice must have a compliance plan and must have access to experienced, knowledgeable medical coding professionals so they can audit and prevent these kind of compliance problems, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Why do we do medical record auditing? The reason is we want to do internal meeting inside the organization, external reviews, the documentation to see that the documentation supports the diagnosis and the procedure codes. And then of course, related to that, we need to have guides to thinking, which is policies and guides to action, which is procedures. This makes the medical practice and the practitioners compliant. They're coding and billing for things that were actually supported by the documentation. And again, as we mentioned, these audits can be conducted either internally or externally. The idea of an internal audit is to find and correct these problems, these inconsistencies, upcoding and so on, before the payer, especially if it's CMS, uncovers it as part of compliance issue. External audits are conducted by third party payers or government agencies. Some of you may be familiar with the one that was done at Reading Medical Center involving their cardiothoracic and cardiology services. That was a very, very big deal. So they, what happened was the CMS fiscal intermediary started reviewing the number of interventional cardiac procedures, cardiothoracic surgery, and they were way over the standard for a like-sized hospital. So that read, led to more reviews, uncovered more fraud and abuse, and ultimately a corrective action plan. When there's a suspicion of inappropriate payment, before we get to the corrective action plan, the carrier, in this case CMS, does what they call a focused review. So they're doing a review that's just focused on one particular problem prone area. And again, why do we do these things? Well, it's the first step to clinical documentation improvement. We talked a little bit about it, but basically the premise of clinical documentation improvement is if the providers and the practitioners have better documentation, we'll have better coding, more compliant coding, more accurate coding, and less chance of compliance issues. And now that the federal and state agencies are getting more involved in medical record auditing, these audits and clinical documentation improvement is even more important. We used to think of this as just a hospital type of thing, but now it's becoming widespread in 
all areas of healthcare, including the medical offices. And again, some of this we've kind of touched on before, but the reasons we do these is these audits is to determine whether the they're outliers before payers find them and request a larger, more expensive carrier audit, want to protect against the fraudulent claims, want to see if there's variation. Again, if you read the book Coronary about what happened at the Reading Medical Center in Northern California, anytime there's a variation from the national averages due to inappropriate coding, there is potentially an issue where CMS is going to be sending out people to audit and review records, which is exactly what happened at Reading. We want to prevent and correct these problem areas before the government or other payers challenge them and basically be coding in a compliant, accurate way. In addition, medical record auditing with better quality documentation, it results in improved care, more accurate care, less redundant tests. It increases productivity. We always think of coding compliance as co preventing upcoding, but it also results in increased revenue, right? If we're coding accurately and compliantly, many times we're leaving money on the table. So also helps with that. So we always think of medical record auditing as preventing overcoding, but also important with undercoding. Again, we talked about the roles of internal and external auditors, kind of straightforward with that. And again, what did the auditors actually do? They supervise the data management. And this is why the curriculum and the competencies at KHIM and HEMA have kind of evolved over time. Instead of applying codes, now we're getting more involved in data management, looking at accuracy, completeness, all these other different types of things. The auditor analyzes the medical record documentation to determine if it supports the procedure and the diagnosis code. Example of this, an organization I'm familiar with in California, what they did to increase revenue stream was they reviewed chest x-rays and looked for aortic calcification and then were trying to suggest and code and bill that patients actually had aortic stenosis and, a, and so on. That is definitely not what we want to do. So we want to look at the medical record documentation to determine if it actually supports what's being submitted. And especially critical in the hospital setting that you want to have people that are auditing hospital records that are familiar with DRG reviews. Qualifications for med we talk about coders and auditors interchangeably. Coders, as we talked about, about and new in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, that role is changing. It's now going into more of an auditor type of thing. Now with electronic health records, we have these systems that suggest codes and rather just submitting them for payment. Now we actually have to go in and audit them. So code, the whole role of coding is moving from going to a sign from assigning codes to doing more medical auditing. Just because somebody can code doesn't mean that they can audit records. In addition to coding qualifications, they need to be certified and certainly have an understanding of clinical documentation improvement. They need to understand how the electronic health record system and the record keeping activities that are involved in it. And they need to understand the federal and state regulations. So we talked about skills that the medical record auditor needs. They need knowledge of auditing, interpretation, analysis, risk, 
detail, accuracy, diagnosis, coding, medical terminology, pathophysiology, all the things that you're getting here in your program. But they also need strong verbal and written communication skills, good organizational skills, the ability to analyze complex data, conduct interviews, prepare reports. And then the last bullet point, probably one of the most overlooked, but very, very important, they need the ability to communicate with practitioners in a professional manner. And that's all I have for you. In the next set of video lectures, we'll be discussing the importance of compliance plans in a medical practice. We'll see you then. Bye now.